The video game hype train is a wonderful beast, isn't it? As it rockets off from the station with promises of titles to come and features that we've never yet seen before, it sure might look like smooth sailing from here on out. Yet what's this? A rock of reality on the tracks? It looks like the ride is going to be a bit rougher than expected. So let's take a look at some in excruciating detail, shall we? Yeah, cheers. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight exact moments that killed video game hype. Number 8. This is what you wanted, right? WWE 2K Battlegrounds when 2K were rightly dragged over the coals with gusto by fans and critics thanks to their abysmal WWE 2K20 offering, it was clear that enough was finally enough. Lambasted for its atrocious bugs, piss-weak dialogue, recycled and outdated animations, and complete lack of modes, the massive negative response sent the publisher into damage control and forced them to pull out of the annual release cycle. This move alone was like a ray of hope for many that, by speaking with their wallets, fans might have actually announced acted a positive change for the ailing franchise, giving the devs time to address the cracks in the foundation rather than just stacking more and more cards on top. And sweetening the deal, 2K even promised that they would still release a wrestling game in the interim and that it would be like nothing we've ever seen before. However, that modicum of hype was replaced with utter horror once we saw what monster we were going to have to grapple with. The first gameplay reveals of WWE 2K Battlegrounds was enough to tombstone any hope we had of getting a good game into the mat. With nightmarish visuals, clunky animations, and of course gameplay that looks somehow hectic and boring at the same time, which alienated both the hardcore crowd and kids in a single move. Fingers crossed it never gets a sequel and isn't indicative of how 2K's future WWE content is going to be treated. Number 7. Seeing Actual Launch Day Code No Man's Sky I know that we're all aware of the, uh, let's just call it, tumultuous journey of No Man's Sky, but trust me, for a while this thing did actually look like it was going to be the game to end all games. Hell, I even remember attending a gig that acted as a preview for the soundtrack courtesy of 65 Days of Static and I was utterly blown away. And I, alongside so many others, wasn't just on a hype train for this game, we were on the hype station orbiting Earth, gazing off into the abyss of space with feverish anticipation, yet the horrible pull of reality sent that space station crash crashing back to terra firma when some cheeky whippet managed to get hold of an advanced copy of the game via eBay and put up a near full preview of the launch version of the game because, my god, did the bloom come off the rose here. Nearly every promise made by the devs was either shown to be false or, at best, wildly over-exaggerated, and just like that, with an almost Thanos-inspired snap of the fingers, the hype train was killed and now we were left adrift in the cold embrace of nothingness. Thankfully, the devs did put the hours in to actually dole out many of the promised features Features, but at launch, well, it was an entirely different story. Number 6. It's not XCOM, it's a card game. Marvel's Midnight Suns. Now, I don't think I've ever swung so hard from being totally embedded in the hype train to jettisoning myself out of the window than when it came to the recent announcement of the Fire Axis developed Marvel Midnight Suns. When I saw the developer name attached to the project, my heart leapt at the thought of what could effectively be seen as XCOM Marvel Edition, but that hype was thoroughly dashed twofold in short order. Firstly, the devs just came out and said that it was most definitely not the case, which to tactics hounds like myself was basically a sign saying, put your wallet away, pal, and this was doubled down on when the gameplay segment showed that combat was going to be focused on randomly drawn cards. Ew. Now, to be clear, games like Slay the Spire show how deck building and tactical combat can work really well, but there is a powerful stench coming from the fact that this title is being published by 2K. And when you combine the fact that loot boxes are going to be pushed hard in this game, this reeks of being able to buff your hero deck down the line. Now, the direct line from marketing is that it's purely cosmetic. But you know what, we've all heard these promises before, and might as well carry the addendum of purely cosmetic until after the review period. The hype isn't completely dead on this title, seeing as Fire Access will likely do the best job they can and have proven their chops time and time again, so consider this a hype body blow rather than a bullet to the head. Number 5. Like an anime fan on prom night. Mighty number 9. 
Much like a wound that never seems to heal, emotions are still pretty raw when it comes to discussing the horror show that was Mighty Number no. 9. And what should have been a spiritual return to form for the Mega Man franchise in the self-imposed drought that Capcom had put the series through at that time, Mighty Number no. 9 was going to be Keiji Inafune and his team unchained and unleashed. Problem was that it ended up being more off the rails than off the chain. Things started well enough with the Kickstarter project generating a hurricane of hype, collecting over 400 percent of its initial asking price, and when assets and short animation packs came out, things looked beyond impressive. However, that mighty 9 turned into a very soft 3 when the first gameplay trailer dropped, as alongside looking ropey enough to hang the project entirely contained an utter clangor of a line. Cry like an anime fan on prom night. This line haunted the entire development and in a single moment felt like a cringy dad joke slap in the face to pretty much half the backers. Not a smooth move. Number 4. Woeful Gameplay Choices – Marvel vs Capcom Infinite To say that Marvel vs Capcom is a bit of a big deal within the eSports fighting community is like saying that Servbot is a bit of a terrible choice of fighter within Marvel vs Capcom 2 – quite the understatement. For years, the liquid smooth gameplay, fantastic dream roster and almighty soundtrack kept the series in the limelight, and constant representation at fighting tournaments fed back into the public consciousness. But that all came crashing to a halt with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Capcom thought they were onto an absolute winner with this title and hoped that it would be picked up by the esports community. However, this same community laughed in the face of Infinite for many, many reasons. While the graphics that looked like if Morph was computer animated were bad enough, the smaller roster, thanks to the exclusion of the X-Men, closed the door firmly for many players. However, it was the announcement of the gem system that killed the hype dead in its tracks. Here, players would be able to equip gameplay altering gems to buff attacks or negate those of their enemies, and as such removed the balance that fighting games should set in stone from the off. Now, while it opened up more team choices, many felt the decision to be a cheap gimmick, including eSport event members who basically barred the game from entry. Ouch. Number 3. When You Realized the Lie – Project Milo Peter Molyneux is a man that you can love and ridicule in equal measure. As much as he's the creative mind behind some incredible gaming experiences, he's also a bit of a snake oil salesman when it comes to pre-release hype. There is nothing he won't say or do or promise in order to get eyes on his product and cash in his wallet, even going so far as to denounce his prior works in order to hype up his latest flavor of the week. And while it would be easy to include any of the Fable games on this list of hype-killing moments, we're going to take a look at one of his most curious and downright insane ideas ever, Project Milo. While not being an out-and-out -out game, Project Milo was designed to show off the raw power of the Xbox 360's Kinect sensor, showcasing how an AI named Milo would react to certain stimuli. It was genuinely amazing to hear Molyneux discuss the details in which Milo would interpret data, and incredible to see it in action thanks to the stage demo. However, this was also the moment that killed any hype for the Kinect as a whole when you realize the painful truth and that was that it was all a lie. There was simply no way the Kinect sensor was capable of the things that were being shown on screen, and in an instant, we all went from hopeful thinking to worrying that the Kinect wasn't going to be able to deliver anything that was shown to us. Now, in fairness, it did seem to strike a middle ground, but for many, this tech demo was the death knell for the product. So cheers, Peter. Number 2. You Can't Catch Em All – Pokemon Sword and Shield if you're to even mention Pokemon to the average person, then they'd probably be able to either hum the theme tune back to you or list off a few poker pals before hitting that glorious tagline of gotta catch them all. So ingrained was this mantra into the public consciousness that it's actually a worrying sign of just how easily we can parrot a slogan that is basically telling us to consume by consume. Still, when it came to the video game franchise, it was a slogan that carried meaning, as with the help of a friend and a link cable, it was indeed possible to capture each and every Pokemon in existence in each and every game. Things started to become pretty ludicrous as the franchise went on, with the roster ballooning to a whopping total of just shy of 900 different critters. And it was here that Game Freak made their hype-killing decision when it came to Pokemon Sword and Shield. In an announcement that sent the fanbase into meltdown, the developer announced that you would not be able to capture each and every critter in the game, which came as a huge blow to fans looking to be the very best. From a development perspective, this kind of made sense, but to every die-hard poker fan, it was the worst news imaginable.
And number one, Back to the Future, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. When looking at the Call of Duty franchise, it's hard not to compare it to the industry fluctuations experienced by the likes of Disney, Marvel, and DC, in that there was the gestation age leading into a silver and gold era, and then the muddy, convoluted, edgy periods before hitting a huge renaissance. Whatever your opinions on the games, the triple threat of sci-fi heavy titles consisting of Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, and Infinite Warfare represent that confusing period in time for the franchise. Now, fans mostly enjoyed the over-the-top action, but lamented that the series would return to a more present day or even past setting. And these voices became louder and louder with each release and culminated in the monstrously disliked launch trailer for Infinite Warfare. Here, fans were saying emphatically that the sci-fi setting was tested and tired. And while the title went on to actually provide a lot of fresh ideas, it was the moment that many fans just tapped out on the series as a whole. The trailer is still one of the most disliked videos on the YouTube platform, and with each of the million-plus downvoters becoming a nail in the franchise, it is the purest example of a hype-killing moment on record. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight exact moments that killed video game hype. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming, board game content, and Warhammer Battle reports outside of work. So if you're into those things, it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I never want to kill your hype, my friend. I want to hype you up to the nines. I want you to remember that you are an absolute badass. You are an absolute ledge and you deserve love, happiness and respect. We all do as human beings, all right? And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. I want you to go out there and absolutely smash it. Be the best person you can be. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.